Hello, Brian Benedus coming to you again from one of my favorite spots, uh, the bottom of my boat. Um, somebody asked me in an email, what's that noise behind me? And that's the air conditioning. Uh, it's actually on 72, keeps it warm, keeps it cool. So all is well right here. Anyway, continually reading, continuing on to read my book, Scared to Death Do It Anyway getting more and more chopped notes on it with the more talks I do. I'm going to go quick because this is a fairly long chapter, one I again love. Um, I love them all. Chapter 14, Quiet the Mind. I hear the waves, sun beating down on my shoulders. It's a near perfect day, wishing I wouldn't get any older. They say that it's gone, for you know it now. Quiet your mind, soak it all in. It's a game you can't win. Enjoy the ride. Zach Brown Band. So far in this book, I've discussed who I am, my family, what I've accomplished in my life, both professionally and financially. These achievements are where I uncover some of my deepest joy and pride, but there is something more. I am now able to take my 40-foot asthma Jenny girl, 10 to 15 miles offshore, shut off the motor without any fear. I often sit there all afternoon, alone, reading, writing, or sometimes just reflecting on how lucky I am. And hopefully while I'm out there, I won't encounter another boat for hours. There was a time when I couldn't even comprehend that a day like that would be possible. Never mind that I would actually enjoy something like this without any fear or worry. And now as I travel successfully all over the country, building my company, contracting vendors, and meeting many new customers, they all see and know the real Brian now, not the scared, worried, petrified Brian from before. I still lift weights and work out every single day and I'm not afraid to say that I can take a shower anywhere on the planet. And I even go into the whirlpools and steam baths on occasion too. You really have to read the book to know what that means. I can go to baseball games, drive through tunnels, go over bridges, stay on the 30th floor of hotels, go to the movies, take cruises, meet with dozens of people and participate in any type of excursion you can imagine. There was a time when I when I was certain that I would not live to see that day. I grew up riding dirt bikes and developed into a motorcycle enthusiast, though I waited until I was 43 years old before buying my first real bike, a 2001 Harley Davidson Road King, and today it's another great pleasure. By the way, I'm not afraid to ride my motorcycle anywhere either. The Zac Brown Band has, has a song called Quiet Your Mind. It is one of my favorites for many reasons. But it's a message has been easier. But it's a but its message has been easier said than done, because just when you think that you've got it all figured out, God has a funny way of bringing it back, as if He's saying, "Hey, buddy, don't get cocky. You're not through this with anxiety yet, just yet." When driving a motorcycle, it's easy to forget that there are situations that are going to make you nervous, and anyone who says that they haven't driven a motorcycle, that have driven a motorcycle and has never been nervous is lying. It doesn't matter how experienced you are or how long you've been riding. There are still as many idiot drivers and bad traffic out there on the road as ever. You have to stay alert and stay careful. But feeling a temporary moment of nervousness isn't the same as experiencing paralyzing fear. I decided one afternoon I would take my motorcycle out for a ride from my home in Southern Rhode Island over the city to Newport. One of the most scenic seaside communities anywhere in the country. If you are familiar with Rhode Island's geography, geography, sorry, you'll know there is almost no way to get to Newport without traveling over Narragansett Bay via the Newport Bridge, which just happens to be one of the hundred largest suspension bridges in the world. I remember smiling to myself as I left the driveway that day. I had successfully crossed that bridge on my bike many times, something I could never have dreamed of accomplishing at one point in my life. The weather that day was spectacular too. The sun was shining, the sky was blue, the breeze was refreshing. And then moments before I reached the foot of the bridge, an all too familiar feeling hit me out of nowhere, like a two by four in a chest. What if, what if I get to the top and have to stop? What if I get to the top and want to jump off? Why the hell am I suddenly feeling this way? All these thoughts ricocheted around inside my head. I was about to do something I had done successfully so many times, and I had even used all my tools before I left the house to get myself prepared and normal. What could be happening? 
This incident is what I refer to as a bad thought day. It happens. When afflicted with this condition for so many years, it's not realistic to expect that it will simply disappear overnight or even in a month or in a year. It is a process. And even when you do everything right, it will still come back once in a while. It will test you. And it's when you'll need it, it's when you'll need to go back to your trusty toolbox once again. It is a moment like this when you'll need to reflect on what was taught and what you've read and trust it. I'm living proof that it works, but the process is not like swallowing a miracle pill or receiving an electric shock treatment of some kind. It's all about rethinking, refocusing, and realizing what it is and what it can do to you, and then reliving and rethinking that process again. The first step is to realize that panic and anxiety will not kill you, and I repeat, it will not kill you. Despite the extreme levels of panic and anxiety I have lived through, I have never reached a level 10. Why? Because in my mind, a level 10 meant death. When your mind and body finally give in, when in the midst of an attack of the worst kind, I wouldn't let myself check the VH radio on my boat because if I suddenly learned the radio didn't work, it would push me to a level 10. At 3 a.m., I wouldn't let myself call the hospital from the ski resort because if I learned it was really closed, it would push me to a level 10. By not knowing these things, I chose to pretend they were, they were okay, thereby never reaching level 10 and staying alive. The cycle becomes an inescapable internal prison. To be on your way, the first step is accepting that level 10 does not mean death. When I flew alone for the very first time, I did so armed with my toolbox. I would use it to repeat a list of quotes and sayings from movies. Though the quotes come from fiction, they felt real to me and became my magic pill. But remember, there is no magic here. After every panic-filled experience, I could reflect back and realize that no matter how bad it was, I was still alive. It hadn't killed me. I think back and reflect on those bridges, tunnels, elevators, and sales meetings and ask myself, what really happened there? The situation didn't cause the panic. I did not have the cri crippling feelings first. The feelings were manufactured in my head and caused the anxiety after I had been thinking about them. My mind calls all, called, caused all the physical feelings too. The bottom line, I am not sick. But when I was in my own process of recovery, I would seek out opportunities to test myself. One such activity was my trip to Fort Lauderdale, where I would rent a motorcycle and drive it all the way down to Key West. When driving from Key Largo to Key West, you will encounter 42 different bridges over 120 miles, including one that is remarkably seven miles long. The famous Seven Mile Bridge is just as described, with ocean waters on both sides as far as you can see, and there is nowhere to get off or hide once you're armed. Armed with nothing except my motorcycle and my handwritten list of positive thoughts, I decided I was ready to attempt to cross and conquer the Seven Mile Bridge alone. At this moment, I realized I wasn't testing myself anymore, but living with myself instead. The word living is critical here. The first, simplest way to lower your anxiety level from a 9 to a 6 or a 5 to a 2 is to change your thought process. You need to accept that you will not die from this. You need to accept that you don't need a hospital because although your heart rate might increase, your heart will not explode. In fact, the worst thing that will ever happen to you is phys you will be physically exhausted. Ever since I was a child, I have felt my throat closing, but never to the point where I really couldn't breathe. My head never exploded despite the growing pressure. And in those moments in my life when my agoraphobia was at an absolute worst, in the face of the biggest what if of all, I never did pass out. I rode my motor motorcycle to the island of Isla Morada, which is the beginning of the seven mile bridge and stopped. I took a room at a local hotel where I could work on confidence and my anxiety. I was in the middle of the healing thought process chapter of my life, but as I mentioned, it does take time, and the longer you have been afflicted and the stronger it has been, the longer it takes to control it. I had already come to ver a very long way, and given the person I once was, I had achieved much. But being the person that I am, I figured that if I could go up and down an elevator once and drive to New York alone once, I was healed. 
subconsciously, it takes a long time to stop testing yourself and instead start living with yourself. All the things you wanted to do, dream of doing, must be achieved through your healing thought process. It's like working too hard or too often after you've experienced an injury. You think you're only going to hurt yourself again. This becomes both an emotional and mental battle. The more you accomplish, the more you want to keep testing, or should I say, living. I stood on a balcony in this hotel in Isla Mirada with a six-pack of Corona under my arm and a Kenny Chesney CD playing in the background. I looked out across the awesome majestic ocean and cried. The tears, however, came from a different place. This time, I cried because I was happy. In my life, I can count many times that my wife has made me happy and that my children have made me happy. But this might have been the first time in my life that I have had that I had that made that I made me happy. I realized that not only had I made it this far, but but that I now know, I now knew that I could drive across the seven mile bridge. I could conquer this. And just knowing I could do this meant I could go back home and coach baseball, build a successful business and lead an enjoyable life outside this prison I had created for myself. Being an early riser, I woke, ordered breakfast on the beach to watch the sunrise, downed a cup of coffee, and prepared my thoughts for the big ride. But negative thoughts were now seeping in. This was not some quick little ride over a two-mile-long bridge like back home. This bridge was seven miles long. Maybe I, could, maybe I wouldn't be able to hold it together that long. I suddenly couldn't eat my breakfast. Just eight hours earlier, I was crying from pure joy and happiness. Now I was scared to death to go over the bridge. Son of a bitch. What the hell happened? Was it false security? Am I still that pathetic panic riddled person? Fuck it. I decided I would turn around and travel back to Fort Lauderdale and stay there quietly for a few nights. No one would ever know. I figured I'd just tell everyone that I made it all the way to Key West and it was beautiful. Here's where the healing thought process is most important. It's at times like these when you start to question whether you really are getting better and you must tell yourself and accept that yes, you are. Just because you have a negative thought or have a whole day full of negative thoughts doesn't mean you failed and need to start all over again. What you need to do is accept and recognize the feelings you are having and know that they are not going to kill you. You are still in control even if you are nervous. It's okay. Let the anxiety come to you and don't fight it. I pulled out the notes from my toolbox and reread them, but they didn't seem as inspiring. I got on my motorcycle and started to head north back to Fort Lauderdale, but for some reason I turned south and headed for the bridge anyway. All the way across the bridge, I could feel my anxiety level rise, level four, five, six. At the midpoint, midpoint of the bridge, I was already at a level seven. But a funny thing happened. My anxiety level stopped rising at seven. I was sweating profusely. My heartbeat was rapid, but I felt I had some control. Suddenly, I felt something new, exhilaration. My heart rate increased a bit more, but not my nerves but not from nerves, from joy. Happiness was slowly pushing out the fear. I got off the bridge at the end and pulled off to the side of the road to take a picture. There were campers, RVs, and fishermen everywhere, but I wanted to record that moment. That photo to this day hangs on the wall in my office, but I don't use that photo as a source of inspiration. I use it to tell my friends the story of my adventure. I don't use it to tell people the story of what I went through, but I use it to tell them the story of where I've been. There is a critical and important difference. You won't find a degree in psychology or psychiatry hanging on my wall. My lessons were lived, not learned, and I know it works. My words, what I've read, and what I've experienced are all pieces to a puzzle that can help, that can help others who suffer from severe levels of panic and anxiety. I promise it will help. Since that trip, I have, met, I have returned to Key West seven or eight times, and four of those times I was alone. And I have driven over that bridge at night, too. Feeling alive through the healing thought process is part of the magic for me. And again, I apologize for using the term magic, as there is no magic involved. The healing thought process is not about testing yourself. It's about being alive. 
It's realizing that the adrenaline rush you get from your fears can be channeled and used differently in profoundly positive ways. Yes, you could fight it, and I've fought it for years crying and living alone in a self-contained prison, being afraid to move and just being afraid. Yet now I can enjoy my family and everything God has blessed me with. The key word here is enjoy. I am not going through what I call the fake false fear motion. FFFM any longer. And I used to write that on my wrist. The FFM drained me, but now I am 54, 55 now, years old, strong, physically fit, and enjoying the best time of my life. And you will too as long as you remember that the healing thought process is not about testing, it's all about living. Just take Zach Brown's advice. Quiet your mind. Here's a picture of me down in Key West on my a rented motorcycle, southernmost point. And I also have a picture. There's a seven mile bridge. I'm sure some of you have heard of you, maybe some of you haven't. But that's from Marathon all the way down to Key West, or Key Largo all the way down to Key West. And there's an actual photo that I took of the, of the bridge. Um, 16, I'll go to 20 with this. Um, just quickly, a, a, an amazing chapter in my life because of the, um, the healing thought process and how I utilized it to help work. There's a line in Shawshank Redemption uh, where um, when he gets out of prison, I can't remember the actor's name, I apologize, it, it's, it's irrelevant, but he looks, he looks up at the wall where a lot of prisoners that just get out on parole, they stay the very first night they get out of, of, of prison. And there's a lot of names inscribed in the walls and the wood and what have you. And there's a phrase and it says, get busy living or get busy dying. And a lot of the prisoners hung themselves. And he decided, to, he being this prisoner, it's Morgan Freeman, thank you. It's Morgan Freeman decided to go live and he wanted to live his life. So he wanted a bus and he went to go meet his buddy down where the ocean is and yada, yada, yada. But that phrase, get busy living or get busy dying, that takes, die, that takes it to the extreme. The living part is the part that I now still to this day work on uh, on a much level a different level and here's a for instance tomorrow today is tuesday tomorrow the 11th tomorrow is wednesday and i have a talk tomorrow evening and it's um it's it's gonna there's going to be all different people there and the, the the group is um professional and college coaches and high school coaches and maybe captains and i don't know two or three hundred people and I was, I'm nervous, but what I do now is the nerves, and I'm still, this is still new to me, I don't care how many talks I have given or have still yet to give, it's still new to me, and it's going to be new until it's not, just like planes, just like anything. All of a sudden, it becomes familiar, and your body is like, okay, it's just, a, and then you have fun with it. But what I've done is I'm, learning even with these talks and this is what I used to do years ago how to take the anxiety and turn it into exhilarate exhilaration exhilaration thank you and it's a very hard thing to do but you have to remember nobody's telling me to do this I'm choosing to do this so if I'm choosing to do this what am I nervous about I'm nervous about my old thoughts and what I could pot what could possibly what's going to possibly happen? Nothing, nothing that hasn't happened to me before. I, I've never fainted. I've never had my throat closed. I've ne it's the feeling. That's what you're really afraid of. It's the feeling that you're going to have. You're going to be uncomfortable for a little while. Okay. Well, you know what I do now because I made it and become successful and come out on the other side and have been able to teach hundreds of people how to deal with it. I tell people, I tell people right up front, I am right now extremely nervous and have an anxiety attack. It's at a level eight, and I'm gonna give you my healing thought process as I talk and get it down to a comfortable level too, which again, you've heard me mention many times, being comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. And I've done it so many times in my life 
and I don't want to use the word practice, but I'm going to use the word I've managed it so many times in my life that it becomes easier and easier and easier. The last thing I'm going to say is, today is Tuesday, just got back from the Cape, and I started to think about it last Thursday and Friday, and that's when the anxiety started to hit. The closer I get to it, it becomes lessons and lessons. And then when I start to walk up to the podium, that's when it hits. But then all of a sudden it comes back down to a normal level. And then I become what I call again, normal Brian, if there is such a thing. Some people would argue that. Anyway, I'm at 20, 20 minutes. I want to try and keep these at 20 minutes. So thank you for listening. And we're getting there. We're moving towards the end of the book. But thank you for your comments. Keep them coming. And I'll see you soon. Take care.